Today's topic, how to make the most of your open enrollment. That's right, it's open enrollment season and it's everyone's favorite season. I know that's not true because most of you get that large PDF or that email from HR and you completely ignore it. Or maybe you wait until about 12 hours before it's due to make any changes. But today, that changes. We're going to give you some tips and tricks on how to prepare for it, but more importantly, we're gonna walk through very common benefits that are offered to many to walk through what you should be looking for from life insurance to disability insurance to FSAs and HSAs and retirement plans, commuter benefits. Let's get crazy here. We're going to walk through all of that together. And while I realize we're putting this towards the end of the year where the bulk of us have open enrollment, some academic institutions, especially in our physician world, might have that summer open enrollment. But for the most of us, it is a little bit later in the year. So we're preparing for that with this topic too. If you have in particular questions or anything that you just want to throw an idea out on, please drop that in the notes. But let's get into it. Let's start walking through these. Let's prepare you. Let's make you not scared of open enrollment anymore. Let's take advantage of this. Let's conquer open enrollment. So stay tuned. That's all coming up next. Okay, so it's time. You have the PDF, you have the packet, you have the video, whatever HR sent you, it is officially open enrollment season. Now, usually what we'll see is open enrollment can be short, sometimes as short as two weeks to as long as maybe four weeks, sometimes a little bit longer depending on the size of the institution. But regardless, it's not a very long period. So it's one of those ones where you wanna get proactive as quickly as possible. But once you get that information, the goal is to actually take some time to look through it. If you're working with a financial planner, we love this stuff. We love reviewing viewing open enrollment packets. We like to see what's changed. We like to see what's new. We like to confirm the data we already have in your plan to make sure it matches up. There's a lot of good that comes with these open enrollment packets. Heck, when we onboard new clients, we usually will ask them for this because it's usually the best description of the benefits. Sometimes we might have to dig a little bit deeper and get something called a summary plan description. But for the most part, this open enrollment packet is beautiful. The key here is you just have to be prepared. Take some time to review it. Sit down with your spouse, your significant other, review this on in terms of What's changed with your offering, but also what's changed with the family, right? Did your family size grow? Did anything change? Has there been any medical changes? We're going to cover that really in the health insurance, the life insurance, and even the disability insurance. So we'll cover that more as we get down there. But key here is take some time, review it. On average, they say about 36% of the respondents, at least from one survey that we note in our blog post, which is also in the notes below, only spend about an hour on their open enrollment packet. Don't be that person. There is so much important information. We're talking about your retirement plan. We're talking about your health insurance, life insurance, disability insurance, FSAs, HSAs. There is so much vital information in this packet. And the good thing is you get to review it year in and year out to make sure it's best fits you and your family's needs. So number one, be prepared. The next section we have on the blog post, but I'm going to combine in here is just more or less in that packet, usually in that first page or two, they'll even say, here's what's changed. The premium costs have gone up, or we added this new health plan that has a day, or we added this FSA, or we added commuter benefits, life insurance change here, new retirement plan has a better match now. Whatever the example would be, they'll usually list that early on. So you kind of get this quick summary sheet that says, hey, here's what's changed. Here's what we want you to be prepared for. So in the the overall preparedness, take some time, review the overall packet, spend some time on your current family situation, any updates that have occurred for you all, but also then getting into the actual PDF packet or the HR packet, however they send it over to you, and then seeing what's changed in the overall plans. But first and foremost, be prepared, spend some time on this, block off a little bit of time on the calendar, maybe talk to HR, talk to your financial planner, your CFP, whoever you're working with, and see where you can optimize these benefits for you and your family. Let's start to work our way through some of the most common benefits you're going to see. Now, is this the same for every employer? No. Is it the same for a lot of larger employers? Yes, you're going to see these core benefits that we're going to review. Maybe some smaller employers don't have all of these benefits but it should be good context for most of you out there as the overall benefits package usually will have most of these included. Now, with that said, you might even have a lot more benefits, right? You can have a lot of different programs that are in there. And I usually say the larger the employer, the more unique their benefit structure could be. So first up, let's do health insurance. Health insurance, vital, right? Not only for you, but also your family. And usually in the health insurance world, we always are coming down to two ideas. Do you want the Rolls Royce plan or do you want 
want the high deductible health plan. Remember, the beauty of open enrollment is you can change this from year to year. So let's just say in a given year, I always kind of use my family as an example. You know, in a year where we are working to grow our family and we plan to have a child, that might not be the best year for us to have a high deductible health plan. Or if any of us need some medical procedures that we know that we're going to have larger costs coming up, we might opt in for a non high deductible health plan and say, hey, we're going to pay more in premiums but we know we're gonna get better coverage for it. But then most of the years, at least for our family situation, which I think is just an easier example to work with here, we usually will opt for a high deductible health plan that gives us access to an HSA. HSA stands for that health savings account. And usually what you're gonna see here is now your premiums are gonna go down, which is fantastic, we'd love to hear that, but you're likely gonna have a deductible and maybe an even higher max out of pocket to hit these numbers. So while your premium goes down, you're gonna have more out of pocket calls, especially at the start. We're on the other side with that Rolls Royce plan, it's the exact exact opposite. You're going to have that higher premium, but ideally with a higher premium, you're paying less out of pocket. The one thing I tell all of our clients to look for, especially with us working with physicians, is the most important number from our side of it is always look for that max out of pocket. Don't worry about the deductible. That's still important, but look for that max out of pocket because that is going to be your worst case scenario. If something happens, I'll use my family's example again. Our middle child is our daredevil. He fell off the monkey bars this year. When he fell off the monkey bars, not only did he break his wrist, he also broke his arm right around his elbow. It was an expensive health year. But even with us using a high deductible health plan in this given year, I knew and know know what my worst case scenario was. I wasn't super excited to pay it, but I knew what our worst case scenario was. And that I think is really important. And even in those packets, I'll even give examples. What if Peggy had a baby? Fred has type two diabetes. I actually think one of them is someone fell and broke an arm or maybe it was broke a leg, but they'll give you examples in there and they'll actually say, hey, here's what we think your costs are gonna be based on this health plan. But health plans are so important. So please take your time, review this, see what's new, what's changed. You know, does it make sense for you and your spouse to be on your plan or vice versa? Who has the stronger plan? Who has the better deductible? deductibles, co-pays, max out of pocket, make sure not only are you reviewing your plan, but also in this example with whether you're married or you have a, another significant other, you can then review this as a team to see who has a better plan. And then two other benefits that we're always looking at inside of the, the health insurance world. One I noted earlier, right? That's your health savings account, your HSA. We love HSAs. They have a triple tax benefit. We have another video on that. We also have a blog post on that if you want to dig into that a little bit more. And the other common one out there is your flexible spending account or what we call your FSA. We like HSAs a little bit more than FSAs, but FSAs do have their own benefits. FSAs can also have a health care arm to it, and then it can also have a dependent care arm to it. So just keep that in mind. The key thing to keep an eye on for FSAs is usually the money will expire. So you wanna make sure that you understand how much will roll over. Sometimes it's none. So your money can literally expire or maybe they'll roll over 500. Maybe they'll give you a little bit extension period of a couple months, but just make sure you understand how your FSA works, your flexible spending account in this example for healthcare. And then on the HSA side, HSA funds do not expire. So HSA is gonna be a little bit easier spot there, but health insurance, super important topic. Please make sure you're giving this topic the time that it deserves to make sure that it fits your needs and your family needs. And if you need to collaborate between your benefits and your spouse's benefits or your significant other's benefits, this is a good spot to review both sides of those plans. Next up on the open enrollment tour, life insurance. Short answer is who needs life insurance? Short answer is this. If anyone is relying on your income, you need life insurance. If anyone co-signed on your loan, which is one that's often missed, you probably need life insurance unless whoever co-signed is well off and they don't mind picking up the tab. The other thing to add on here is always take the free insurance. That's the key here. So if your employer is offering you one times your salary or 50,000, that is one that you wanna take no matter what, right? You, you don't have to overthink that one, take the free stuff. One thing I always note here, sometimes we'll get this question, we don't get it as much anymore, but if they have over $50,000 that's being provided by your employer, you'll see a little line item on your pay stub for life insurance. That's just what we call imputed income. So when your life insurance benefit is greater than 50,000, essentially you're picking up some of that premium and paying taxes on it is how it works, which is called imputed income. But for life insurance, the other big topic we want to cover is if you're in good health. Now, I know that you could probably take that about a million ways, but if you're in good health, you may do better going to the private market, meaning that you might want to find an independent insurance broker, someone that can quote numerous providers, not just one provider because your brother-in-law works there. You want someone that can spreadsheet numerous providers and you want to find a good term policy. Another key thing here, term policy. So what do we take out of this? Independent and term are the two things we're looking for here, but you might do better in that 
world. The nice thing about this is it's transferable. So you can change employers 20 times and you get to take your insurance with you no matter what. Now, if you're not in great health, you might do better locking in some employer benefits here. And usually what they'll label this is supplemental. So if they offer you one times your salary for free, they might say, hey, you can also add up to another 4X, four times your base salary or however they're gonna describe salary in this example in supplemental coverage. And they'll give you the quotes. They'll say, hey, for this age bracket, it's this. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, it's gonna be based on tiers. So they'll say like ages 30 to 34, 35 to 40, they'll give you these tiers and it'll go up a little bit over time as well. And they usually break it down in terms of a thousand. Main takeaway here for life insurance is one, take away the free stuff. Now the key is, do you need to add more? So if someone is relying on your income, probably wanna to look to add some more here. If someone co-signed on your loans, if you have children, if you have a spouse and you're the main breadwinner or you're the higher earner, I would say, think of it as if you were going tomorrow, what do you wanna cover on that bill? Education, pay off the mortgage, this debt, this debt, give my family X just to get through things. That's what you need to think through in life insurance. So take your time on life insurance, another vital topic here, especially for those of you that might have some trouble getting private policies. This could be your best chance to lock it in. And one more thing, if you leave an employer and you are not insurable, meaning that you are going to have a lot of trouble getting other insurance if you leave this employer, see if they have any conversion options or see if it's transferable, meaning that you might be able to take that group policy that you locked in and transfer it to a private policy and take it with you. So if you have some bad health conditions and you're worried that you'll never get another insurance policy or if you know your next employer is not going to have it, check to see if your current policy can be converted into a private policy for yourself. Bad news is it's probably going to have to go to permanent life insurance. Permanent life insurance is going to be more expensive. I don't love permanent life insurance, but in this example, it could also be vital for, for you and also for your family. So don't forget to check that as well based on what I just described there. But life insurance, don't miss that one. Another vital benefit here. If you can't go to work tomorrow, how do you pay the bills? That's what disability insurance is for. This is one of the most underutilized and misunderstood insurances out there. But as a young working professional, Young is more important because you're insuring your workable years, but mid-career, heck, even late career, disability insurance is absolutely vital because it's insuring your biggest or at least one of your biggest assets, and that's just you. That's the ability to wake up and go to work every day. So please do not write off disability insurance and think, what does this even cover? And usually on the HR side, you'll see it in two forms. You'll see both short-term disability and long-term disability. Short-term disability is important for the smaller events. I'm gonna lean this conversation a little bit more towards long-term. Again, with us working with physicians, I'm I'm not worried about you not going to work for a month or two. I'm worried about you not going to work for like 10 years, 15 years, heck, five years is going to throw a real wrench in your financial plan. So disability insurance, take advantage of that. Same rules apply. Take the free stuff. I could probably add an asterisk there, depending if you want more thorough coverage and your employer allows you to opt out of it as a physician. Let's just stick with the, the basic idea of take the free stuff. Now, the only reason why we don't love group disabilities, 99% of the time, it is not going to be a true ONOC policy. I think once in over a decade now, I've seen one group plan and it was a very small group where they actually wrote in true ONOC disability. I've never seen any other times outside of that. But this is one topic where if you are insurable, you likely want to start at the private market, get as much private coverage as you can, get true own OC coverage. It's going to be a lot more expensive, but it's going to be a lot more thorough. Where most employer plans are maybe something called a modified own OC or worst of all, an any OC, and those are not going to be great coverage for you, especially as a physician, any high income professional is in certain specialties, you could make an argument that you also don't want modified, you want a true ONOC policy. And to this, as the time I'm recording this, there's only five providers out there that actually give you true ONOC disability. But disability insurance is vital. Do not miss this piece of it. If you don't have any disability, please take this as my giant screaming, shouting at you that you need to go get disability insurance. Same rules apply here though, where if you might be uninsured, uninsurable in the private market, you wanna take advantage of this policy here. If you're watching this video and you are a resident or a fellow, contact your HR and see if they have something called a GSI, Guaranteed Standard Issue Policy, where that is going to be a very strong disability policy, but two things that are beautiful with it, it is going to essentially have no underwriting and it should be what we call unisex. So males, that doesn't help you too much, but for our female physicians, 
positions, that is vital. That is going to keep those premiums lower. And then this is a policy you can build around as you advance in your medical career. So disability insurance, another vital one. Don't miss this one. Next up, retirement accounts. One of my favorite topics. I'd argue all of these are my favorite topics, but retirement accounts. And the main takeaway here is one to see, are you missing anything? Have you been maxing out your 403B, but now you have access to this 457B? Did they change something? Did they increase the match that now requires you to increase your salary? Did you get a bonus this year or an increase in your pay? And if you weren't maxing out your 401k or 403B, you now have a chance to increase that. If you could increase your 401k by one, 2% every year, assuming that you're not one of those ones maxing it out already, these are huge wins in the long run. In a given year, maybe it's not too much, but it, it compounds over time. The main takeaway I want you to get out of the retirement savings is, one, are you taking advantage of all the accounts? Is it a 403B? Is it a 457B? Do they have a 401k option? Do they maybe have a mega backdoor Roth IRA option in there hidden somewhere? And essentially you would do this through the, through the after-tax portion of it, but Google it. That is one other area that maybe that's out there for you. Did they change investment options? How is your current portfolio? Is it invested properly? Are you using good low-cost funds? Have you reviewed this? Most of the time, HR doesn't really want to touch this one too much, so they might say, hey, the 401k plan is through a Vanguard or Fidelity. They actually have reps that'll walk you through it and explain all these investment options and the walk you through the expense ratios and all that stuff. Take advantage of it. Worst case scenario, you learn something new. So take your time, review the retirement accounts, make sure you're taking advantage of them. You know, has anything changed, right? Oh my gosh, I've been with this employer for 20 years. I built this portfolio when I was 34 years old and, and now I'm 54 years old. Probably got to pull back some of this risk now. Whatever the example would be, you want to review it. So make sure you take this time, review your current retirement accounts. Did they add anything new? Do you need to tweak anything? But retirement accounts are another vital area in the overall employer benefits. Take advantage of it. Make sure you're not missing anything. Last but not least, a few other benefits that we want to bring to your attention. As I noted at the start of the video, you likely have a lot more benefits than what we just noted here. Maybe if you're a very small employer, maybe you don't have all these, but if you're a larger employer, you likely have even more than what we're reviewing here. But these should be your heavy hitters. The first thing I just want to note here is on the FSA, the flexible spending account. I noted it earlier, but there's also one for dependent care. So if you are paying for child care, a dependent care FSA is a good way to get pre-tax deductions deductions for that child care. And if you're a high income household, high income physician or dual physician household, this might be your only way to get a deduction for child care. So keep that in mind. And as I know, child care, also, if you're taking care of any adults, right, if you have your parents living with you, if you have your grandparents living with you, you can also utilize the same thing for adult care as well. The other one that we like to take advantage of just because of how many major academic hospitals are in larger cities, keep an eye out for commuter benefits. If you're living in New York City and you're paying for the subway, the Metro card, these are things that you might be able to do pre-tax. As a high income professional, whether it's federal, state, or local taxes, you wanna to try to take advantage of as many pre-tax benefits as you can. So keep an eye on that for the flexible spending account for dependent care, but then also if you can take advantage of any type of commuter benefits through the employer benefits portal as well. And there you have it, your tips and tricks to conquer your open enrollment. I know it's not your favorite topic. It's a huge PDF with all these complex terms and technical jargon and this and that. And I think I'm already doing this. I didn't do this or I did that. Or when I reached out to him, no one got back to me. I'm just going to punt on this. Don't punt on it. Take Take some time to review this. These are vital topics. We're talking about health insurance, life insurance, disability insurance, your retirement plan, FSAs, HSAs, commuter benefits. There are so many vital topics, especially in the world of financial planning, that you need to understand what you have, what you can take advantage of, and making sure that you're optimizing your open enrollment. And the beauty of it is you get to go through this every year. I say the beauty of it. You might say Ugh, yearly, but you get to reevaluate, change things, update your health plan because this has changed, and then go to this health plan. Take some time, review your benefits, sit down with HR, sit down with your financial advisor, sit down with your spouse, your significant other, review this, block off a little bit of time in your calendar, conquer your open enrollment. As always, thanks for hanging out with me for about 10 minutes or so in your crazy day. If you have not subscribed, now's a good time to subscribe to the channel. If you click on this little bell icon, you also get a notification every time we release a new video. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you on the next video.